Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part eight of my code refactoring tutorial. Today, I'm going to show you how to eliminate duplicate code using the template method pattern. So in going through and explaining how the template method pattern works in this refactoring, the template method pattern actually fits into a part of code refactoring called generalization. And what it is used to do is transform specific code into general purpose code. And in so doing, this is going to simplify as well as remove duplicate code. Now the template method pattern itself is going to help you eliminate all that duplicate code. And you're going to know when you need to use it when you notice that objects are performing similar steps in the same order. In that situation, you're going to implement the similar code in what is called a template method and then allow subclasses to override the behavior that is going to vary. So enough of reading a presentation and let's just start writing some code. Okay, so let's just say I kept this very, very simple, so I'm 100% positive you're going to get it. Let's say you want to make a series of different class objects that represent different types of sandwiches. How might you do that? Well, you might just come in here and create yourself a boolean or a whole bunch of booleans that are going to represent... For example, if the customer wants condiments, and I'm just going to leave it there, and just imagine that there's a whole bunch of different booleans, then what would you want to do? Well, you'd have to create a constructor, of course, that is going to have to accept all of these different types of booleans, like this one, but of course there's going to be many, many more, and it's going to handle what differs between all of these different sandwiches. And we're going to have to assign these to whatever is passed over inside of here, which is going to make for a kind of complicated constructor. But either way, then what are we going to need to do after we handle all of those different booleans? Well, we're going to have to come in here, and we're going to have to make our sandwich for each one of these different sandwiches. And what are some of the things that are the same between every sandwich? Well, for the most part anyway, you're going to have to cut a bun if you want to make one. Um, maybe add meat, definitely, if it is going to be a hamburger. Then add vegetables, of course, and all the code that is available underneath of the video if you want to look at it, do whatever you want with it. Then on top of that, of course, if a whole bunch of these other guys up here already didn't have it, you're going to have to go through all of these different booleans, and you're going to have to check to make sure that you are making the right type of sandwich for them. Condiments. So there we are. If we are, we're going to call the add condiments method. And then after that's all set up, we're going to wrap up our sandwich, and it's going to be ready to go. Now, let's say that we also wanted to create a veggie sub in veggiesub.java. What is it going to look like? Well, chances are it's going to look a heck of a lot like this hamburger. We're still going to use a bun, add meat. Well, that's something that's going to differ. Like I said before, we have a way to handle situations where different methods are needed inside of these class objects. Add vegetables. Well, it's a veggie sub. It needs vegetables. We'd still like to give them the option of whether they want condiments or not. And we're always going to wrap the sandwich. So really, the only difference between making a hamburger and making a veggie sub is this method right here. So this is a situation where the template method pattern makes a lot of sense. So how exactly are we going to make it? What we're going to do is I'm going to make a public abstract class called sandwich.java, build everything in there, and then extend our sandwiches from the sandwich.java class. Now remember, this is what we're trying to do here. We want to implement the similar code inside of the template method, which you're going to see here in a second. However, allow subclasses to override the behavior that varies. And the behavior that varies between the hamburger and the veggie sub is the add meat. That's it. So what are we going to do? We're going to go public abstract class. And this guy right here is going to be called sandwich. And then we got to implement all these different things. So what are we going to do? We're going to go final void. And we're going to go make sandwich because we want to make sandwiches here. And then how exactly is this going to work? Well, it's going to look really close to what you just saw. Just to clear things up, I think I'm going to put in a print line here and have it be something like a new order. And there we are. And then what are we going to do? Well, we're going to cut our bun just like we did before because all our sandwiches are going to require a cut bun. Then we might say something like if customer wants 
meet, well then, we're going to call the add meet method. Pretty simple. What you're noticing here, though, is there is no, except for the built-in constructor, we're not going to be passing all this information over like we normally did inside of that busy constructor. We got rid of that. Well, then after we decide if we want to add meat or not, let's just say we're not giving them an option. We're putting vegetables on there whether they want them or not. Then we might also ask them, however, if they want condiments. And there we are. If customer wants condiments, we're going to ask them. And if they want condiments, we're going to call the add condiments method. And then we're going to go wrap sandwich and get that sandwich ready for them to eat. Then what you want to define are all of the methods that you want to be overridden by subclasses. And how they're going to stand out is they're going to start off with abstract void, which is going to force them to be created inside of the subclasses, and right like that. And the other one is going to be abstract avoid, and this is going to be condiments. So by defining them as abstract, that means they must be overridden. Then you're going to have to add all of your methods that every sandwich is going to use. So public void cut bun, like we defined above. And in that situation, we are going to just come in here and say something like, the bun was cut. And there we are. Thankfully, there's no cheese on any of these sandwiches. And then we're going to come in here also and public void, add vegetables. And this is going to be something else that every one of these is going to have. And to keep myself from typing out everything, let's just go system out. And let's just say we got lettuce, onions, and tomatoes. And there we are. So we have that also set up. And what is something else that all these are going to have? Well, wrap sandwich. So we're going to come in here and go wrap sandwich like that. And then inside of this, we're going to print the sandwich was wrapped. And there that's set up. So that's good. Then what we're going to have to define are what are called hooks. These are going to be methods that can be overridden. Remember, abstract, when that's in the beginning, it is going to force all of these subclasses to override those methods. These are going to be optional. And this is also the reason why we don't have Booleans all over the place, because we're going to define these inside of methods. Here we're going to say customer wants meat. If we think most of our sandwiches are going to require meat, we're going to give this a default value of true. And that's going to save us a lot of time. And we're also going to come in here and go customer wants condiments. If we think most customers are going to want condiments, we're also going to mark that as true. And there you go. All set up. And sandwich.java is also set up. So let's now take a look at hamburger and how it's going to change. So here we are inside a hamburger. Now remember, sandwich, this guy right here, is the template method and it is marked final. That means this guy cannot be made in any of the subclasses. So we are going to be forced to get rid of make sandwich. Gone. So make sandwich is now gone. How are we going to fix this? Well, I'm actually going to also come in here and get rid of these guys right there. Don't need any of those because the template method is going to handle that for us. And inside of the hamburger class, well, of course, we're going to need to go extends sandwich. And then that's going to give us an error because we need to add unimplemented methods. Just come here, click on add unimplemented methods. And one of them is going to be add meat. Now we're just going to have to come in here and define what is different. Because remember, add meat is something that we must override. So we're going to go hamburger added. And there that is. That's all set up. And the other thing that needs to be overridden here is add condiments. And here we're just going to come in and put special sauce added. File save. All done. So as long as we don't need to override any of these guys down here, customer wants meat, they do. Customer wants condiments, they do. We don't have to pay any attention to those. However, in VeggieSub.java, we will. So how are we going to set up Veggie Sub? Well, pretty much the same way. We're going to go public class Veggie Sub extends sandwich 
right, like that. And it's also going to give us an error, add on implemented methods, and there we are. So that's all set up. And one thing that's going to change about this is we are going to come in here and we're not going to want meat on our veggie sub. So how are we going to define that inside of here? We're just going to come up here and override it by going boolean customer wants meat. Put that there. And whenever it's called for this subclass, it is going to return false. And what else do we need to do? Well, add meat's not going to do anything. So let's just go in and delete that and then down here add condiments well we want those in this situation so we're going to go system out print line and then put something like vinegar and oil added and there we are got that all set up and guess what everything else is set up so now we're going to go into cook.java and we're going to take a look at exactly how we're going to run all this so if you want to create a new sandwich now we're just going to go sandwich and let's say the customer one that comes into our new store says, I want a hamburger. And you say, okay, hamburger. And there we are. We just got that all set up. And if we want to make our hamburger, we're going to go customer one and make sandwich like that. And the sandwich will be made. Now, if we want to do the same thing and the next customer wants a veggie sub, no problem. We will make you a veggie sub and we will just put that right there. And if we want to initiate the order, we're going to go make sandwich. Just like before, except we want to make that sandwich. Call that. And if we execute this guy, doink, new order pops up here. And then we can see here, bun is cut, hamburger added, lettuce, onions, tomatoes, special sauce, sandwich is wrapped. And then the next one, bun is cut, lettuce, onions, tomatoes, vinegar, and oil added, sandwich is wrapped. And that is the template method. Feel free to leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.